each other okay so now we are talking about the nucleic acid sequencing by sequence the nucleic acid we can know how uh, uh, two organisms related because uh, because as we know whether we are doing the uh, RFLP or uh, anal uh, PCR analysis and whatever we are doing is based on the nucleic acid structure now if we can sequence the whole nucleic acid that will be the most uh, most uh, what you can say a trustable proof uh, for us most reliable proof for us uh, for to look at the structure to look at uh, the, the evolutionary uh, context uh, between different species between different organisms okay that's why we are uh, using this DNA nucleic acid sequencing now there are sequences out there which can sequence a nucleic acid of an organism really fast like illumina sequencing which uh, which is uh, which, which is made up with that capillary sequencing method and we can use those sequencing generate rapid DNA sequencing now now a question is arised that w if we try to sequence the nucleic acid then what type of nucleic acid we are using for our purpose is it DNA or RNA now if we're using the DNA then what type of DNA if we're using the RNA then what type of RNA DNA is being uh, cut out because RNA has been taken because RNA sequence has been used for most extensively in microbial taxonomy why that because they are essential for a to a critical organelle found in all microorganisms so they have we can find a common or origin of RNA from the evolutionary history that is, that has been carried out in all the microorganisms we can found that RNA has built something inside the microorganisms and that is ribosome as we know that is ribosome and these ribosomes are made up with RNAs especially what type of RNAs by rRNAs as we know mRNAs can be changed mRNAs can be varied but this rRNA which makes this ribosome uh, are some of the sequence are there inside the rRNA sequence that is not changed from many many millions of years uh, throughout this evolutionary history that suggests us that that part of the ribose uh, rRNA rRNA or ribosomal RNA are really 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 constant so they are having that signature sequences that is uh, that is marked nature remarkable nature of the 16s rRNAs that helps us to understand the relationship of the rRNA because we can find this rRNA uh, position in the previous primitive uh, cells and you can also find this in eukaryotic very very much advanced cells in both cells they are having this signature sequence common so what will vary further it will help us to understand so what we have we have something scale we have a scale for with which we can compare the other things we can compare the presence of different types of nucleic acids the evolution of different type of nucleic acid the incorporation of different types of nucleic acids to finally learn uh, the what is uh, the relation of organisms okay so their functional role is uh, same to all ribosomes and their structure changes very very slowly with time presumably because of their constant and critical role so they are playing a critical role of protein synthesis so that's why cells do not want to change their structure whenever any kind of mutation is taking place so they are less vulnerable to mutations so rRNA contains variable and stable sequences and the stable sequences as we know are called the signature sequences now both closely related and very distinctly related microorganisms can be compared using rRNA because we find this rRNA present at this uh, having this type of same constant uh, signal sequences signature sequences in the earlier organisms as well as the new developed organisms this was an important advantage as uh, distinctly related organisms can be studied only using sequence that change little with time so that's why we're using nucleic acid sequencing that's why we're using rRNA sequencing on only the rRNA sequencing not the other types of RNA because of this kind of features this side of features is only provided by the rRNAs that's why using it and we'll use it and among those rRNAs we are having 16As, 23As and other types of rRNAs among them we are using 16As rRNAs because the 16As rRNAs as we know are not big are not huge in uh, nature it is really small and uh, there are some RNAs there which are really huge, really big, and some RNAs which are really small. But the 16S RNA, what we are looking at, are not very much big, not very much small. So we can use it. It is very, very handy for us to use uh, these RNAs to look at. Now let's talk about the homologous genes and uh, what is the importance of knowing these homologous genes. And what do you mean by the homologous genes? So. Uh, 
before starting about knowing this homologous genes uh, i must tell about the orthologs and paralogs so what do we mean by orthologs orthologs are actually the homologous genes it, it, they are the part of homologous as we can see orthologs and paralogs are the part of the homologous genes and orthologs are the homologous genes that belong to different species but still remain or still retain their original function so that they are doing their original function what they used to de uh, used to to do at the earlier time but they now belong to different species now if we look at the paralogous genes the paralogous are again the homologous genes the type of homologous genes that have arisen by the gene duplication and are found in the same organism so what happens a same organism possessing a particular gene for doing a particular job now the it need uh, sometimes it need that gene to function more that's why what what it it, it what it is done what it uh, do at that time it uh, it just uh, copy that gene and attach that gene along with its genome to make uh, the repeat sequence of that gene and uh, in, in the same organism we can found uh, we can find find this kind of genes we call in uh, the uh, paralogous genes okay Uh, so only orthologous now you can see uh, if i give an example because uh, example always uh, simplifies matters so if we talk about the early globin gene for example this is the globin gene for earlier time of evolution now this gene has been duplicated so if we have a duplication of the gene we have alpha chain uh, gene we have a uh, beta chain gene so these two types of chains are present there now uh, from the alpha chain gene if we uh, look at the alpha chain gene alpha chain gene can be found in frog can be found in chick and mouse so the genes which are present in frog or chick and mouse will be called orthologs because this genes having the same function because they were same origin but now is now it, they are present in separate organisms that's why they are called orthologs and if we look at the paralogous situation then we look at this beta chain which has been duplication of the same gene and this beta chain also been found in mouse chick and frog if i take the beta chain of mouse and also the alpha chain of mouse so which we know that uh, from which originates from a same gene so the same gene has been duplicated now this duplicated genes are being found in the same uh, organism which is mouse in this case so this is called the paralogous situation so the paralogous genes so paralogous means the duplicated gene present in a same organism orthologous mean the gene having a having a particular function in multiple organisms okay now uh, what why we need to talk about this because we know that orthologous genes are the type of genes that can be used in the construction of phylogenetic trees now remember our goal is to make a good phylogenetic tree otherwise we cannot proceed so our actual goal to make phylogenetic tree by looking at which we can tell that who is related to whom who is more closer to whom who is dis uh, distantly related to whom now the classical example is this type of gene is 16s ribosomal rna gene why now let us look uh, because as we are looking here uh, the 16s rrna because uh, let's look that usually this 16s rrna is universally distributed so we can find it in in different different types of uh, organisms as we know that is an orthologue that's where you can find uh, the presence of the 16s rrna gene in many a type of organisms and they are functionally homologous because they have a same origin uh, in evolutionary history and the molecule of identity function it has a function similar because they have a same homolog uh, homologous region and it has the origin of a particular ancestry that's why it is having a, a s identical function okay that's why this rna is used now there are rnas uh, which are also this 5s rrna 16s rrna and 23s rrna but why we are using the 16s rrna only because the rrna are ancient molecules that represents only a small part of the genome and if you look at here uh, they are functionally constant uh, universally distributed and moderately well conserved across a broad phy phy phylogenetic distances whatever is there but why we take the 16s rrna in this case because as we know in case of 15s rrna it is made up uh, with 120 nucleotides it is very very short it is too short in fact for carrying information or information of content now if we look at this 23s rrna it is 2900 nucleotides long oh uh, so it may may uh, it is good but it is too long so if uh, if uh, the, so there is a large difference between 120 nucleotide and 
1900 nucleotide so if we find something intermediate than 120 so higher than 120 nucleotide lower than 3000 nucleotide we found something that is uh, the 16s rRNA which is made up with 1500 nucleotide so it is long it is highly conserved in nature it is universally distributed it is functionally constant and well conserved so these three natures along with its 1500 nucleotide sequence that means its its height its length so it have a suitable length it is a uh, functionally constant it is uh, universally distributed and moderately well conserved so conserved functionally constant universally distributed and uh, a very fine length so these all things are giving advantage to the 16s rRNA over other types of nucleic acids to be to be selected as a chronometer now why we call it a chronometer as a chronometer tell us the time uh, from one time to another time it remains constant in a particular place but it shows us the time it shows which time is it that using this 16s rRNA it will in itself remain constant but it will tell us that who is related to whom so if we look into the structure of 16s rRNA there are domains which are similar uh, there are regions which are conserved through this evolutionary history there are specific regions of DNA that has proved to be the most informative to evolutionary related uh, in 16s rRNA. The gene that encodes the RNA component of smaller subunit of bacterial ribosome uh, is really really important and really is called the chronometer. Now in this case if we uh, now if we study the 16s rRNA of different bacteria now it's a time to put this uh, concept on test and we start to test that we are using the 16s rRNA analysis to check whether two bacteria are related to each other if we uh, we, are do, we have done all those techniques like serological tests like footprinting uh, fingerprinting uh, of DNA like we have studied the GC content and from them we are we, are, we have uh, we have get some idea about who is related to whom now we are using this technique to prove that whether this technique is right or not then after doing this technique as we know using this technique uh, after the DNA uh, gel analysis we can find that these different types of bacteria or even different species of bacteria as look lactobacillus lactis lactobacillus acidophilus lactobacillus brevis and kefir this all those bacteria are belonging to the same uh, genus they are only varying in their species but look at the remarkable feature of 16s rRNA that all of these are showing differences so we can easily identify the bacteria by just sequencing the 16s rRNA whether they are belonging to one species or not whether they are belonging to species or not so this is a very very important technique which helps us to understand because as we can look in this uh, diagram all of these are different nothing is just identical to each other maybe some region of it is identical but in other places most of it is not identical is different from each other so by looking at it we can really tell whether two organisms are related whether they belong to same group whether they belong to same genus same species or not so here uh, is another example if we look here is the position in rRNA uh, and here is the concession because if we look for the sequence A we can look at this gamma proteobacteria it presents and in cyanobacteria it also present but in case of spirochete it is not instead of it, we pre it, it G is present okay so these are uh, this is the way how we can look at uh, this uh, RNA 16s RNA sequencing uh, signature sequencing using this bacteria using uh, the different uh, using this sequencing techniques DNA RNA sequencing techniques so nowadays we go for 16s techniques for perfectly uh, conclude our uh, decision that what type of bacteria we are dealing with if we if some bacteria we found is unknown to us we go through the simple biochemical techniques as we have talked about we we'll go through some of the techniques which is which uh, simply we can process before going to that so if those techniques are not reliable enough are not giving us the direct uh, answer then you go for the 16s rRNA which will finally give us the answer with which we can conclude uh, something okay so that's why it's really important 
so how can you develop the phylogenetic classification so if you look by using these techniques the detailed phylogenetic tree of we can of one phyla which is called a lineage uh, of bacteria based on the 16s ribosomal rna rna subunit is being done and by doing this we can find here you can say the cytophaga and we have place of flavobacteria are much more related chlamydia is much more related with cyanobacteria and we, uh, these are related gram positive bacteria and proteobacteria is a type of gram uh, so this is the different types of bacteria and we also have here thermotoga is totally different as we can look at by studying the 16s rna sample and by looking at here and you have green non uh, non sulfur bacteria is related to this thermotoga bacteria and these are this is how we know actually uh, by using the 16s rna technique how we can do this now I'm going to just finish my talk by telling the polyphasic uh, taxonomy because nowadays as we know that all those different techniques though I, we are having the, the techniques of biochemical analysis we are having the molecular approaches we are having all those very very important and special uh, specific approaches to study the gene of uh, gene sequence of bacterial cells but still all these things itself is not enough so we need to if we need to conclude something if we need to make a phylogenetic tree which is much more reliable we need to use all these things together all those techniques together along with this serological techniques and and this gc content technique along with this dns uh, along with this biochemical analysis along with this uh, DNA fingerprinting techniques and finally with the 16s rRNA sequence analysis we'll incorporate all these things together and incorporate that and look at them together analyze all these things together compile all the techniques and result from the techniques together and finally derive a conclusion so we are not looking at the morphological so look how advanced the taxonomical approach has been as the day we are going on because in previous times we can only state that this is related to this by looking at the structure only looking at the morphology only but now we know if we look at only the structure only the morphology it will be failed it, it, it cannot tell us the right it cannot tell us the truth will be betrayed so we need to look it inside the cell you need to look for the genes you need to look for the biochemical characteristics and we'll do the same and after that we compile them together with those results and finally having a satisfying conclusion